the money that I collected. It's honorable. Destiny of Nigeria. Come on, everybody. 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 Come on, Angles and perspectives can be overwhelming in our present world of information overload. This is introducing Ground Zero. Ground Zero is a current affairs discussion forum program covering topical issues in the polity. The program is a platform for an in-depth analysis of trending issues by professionals, authorities in various fields, analysts, and key actors in the polity. Ground Zero gives the listener an opportunity to contribute to the discussion via phone call, SMS, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. From the conservatively serious to the ridiculously funny, Ground Zero accommodates them all: professionals, urban contemporary businessmen and women, policymakers, public service workers, students, artisans, traders, and the in-between. Ground Zero. Comes up from 5 to 6 p.m. every Tuesday and Friday on Invicta FM, and 5 to 6 p.m. every weekday on Prussian Radio and Television. Ground Zero is a production of the Prussian Media. Tune in. Yes, it's another lovely day, and uh, you are listening to Ground Zero on uh, Prussian Radio in collaboration with Invicta FM. Yeah, right here in Kaduna, and today on Prussian Radio, it promises to be very, very interesting because we will be connecting to our veteran journalists outside of Kaduna. Apart from the uh, guests that we have in the studio, and uh, together we'll be looking at the snippets that is already trending on our social media handles. And uh, the snippets today, uh, some that I'm sure you all be interested in being part of. But meanwhile, Ground Zero is a flagship program on Invicta FM and on Procyon Radio, and uh, it comes up every day on the of the week on Procyon Radio. But on Tuesdays and Fridays, it's networked with Invicta FM. And today, being a uh, 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 Tuesday, we'll be networking with Invicta FM today. So, uh, and on the program this evening. We'll be looking at uh, this snippet. INEC says 2023 polls may be postponed or cancelled due to insecurity. That's the first snippet. Why the second snippet is one that is becoming synonymous with Nigerian politicians and, of course, their spouses. When a woman politician is in power and position, the husband will abrogate to himself powers that the office of the wife does not give him. So also public uh, employees and all of that it happens all of the time and everywhere. So we will be looking at how uh, the direct the DSS director's wife orders the arrest of a uh, common governorship uh, candidates, and uh, we will also be looking at how we all of these affects things that happens in the country okay yes you are listening to ground zero on invicta 98.9 fm and also on procyon radio and television and today we have some of these snippets that uh, we'll be looking at standing by already we have a uh, uh, elder lambert opera he's a veteran journalist and uh, we will join in a couple of minutes. And also I have with me in the studio already Samuel Johanna. Samuel Johanna is a, a politician and also an analyst. How we are going to marry the two of them, we'll see how it will go today on the program. And uh, like I was telling you earlier, the topics I will be looking at or the snippets is um, INEC saying that the 2023 poll may be postponed or cancelled due to insecurity and also the DSS, uh, the, the, the wife of the, of the DSS director that ordered the arrest of uh, a governorship candidate in Kano. It is becoming, uh, would I say, unbecoming of our politicians 
to regularly have their spouses getting involved in all of this. And of course, to contribute to the program, you can get across to us on 0809464206. It's not yet time to do that. But also on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and every other channel, you can get across to us on Procyon RTV. P R O C Y O N R T V. And uh, listen to us on www.procyonnews.com. You can listen to us on www.procyonnews.com. Okay, first, let's uh, go straight to. Okay, just as we are speaking, Femi Oyelola, the correspondent of People's Daily, also stepped into the studio. And together, we are all going to talk about these issues. But first, let's go to Lambert of Barra. Lamba, Dr. Lamba, good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Um, good evening, sir. I am going to be on Grand Zero Digital. All right. Uh, uh, you've had the snipers that you'll be looking at on the program today. That's right. That's right. Okay. Topical. Yes. Now, let's start with the first one. Einek, chairman, has uh, told Nigerians that... Uh, because of insecurity in the nation and uh, other issues that the system is battling with, that there may be a postponement or a cancellation of this particular uh, election that's coming up in less than two months. And this is a cause of concern to many Nigerians because Nigerians have been eagerly awaiting this particular um, this particular elections. Now, from your perspective, as a journalist that has been in the beat, and of course as an elder, as someone that's interested in what happens in Nigeria, can you give us your angle to all of this, and what's your take about it? Okay, if you recall, the last, the last, or the first time I appeared on this program, I think was the last that should be around uh, November or so. Yeah. We spoke about um, electoral violence and um, I also emphasized that it appears to be yeah, or there appears to be um, some vested interests who are perpetuating this violence and who do want the election to vote. And that Nigeria should be prepared and get ready and ensure that they overcome the challenges of violence and should guarantee that we should guarantee for ourselves a smooth, free and fair election, devoid of violence. There are fifth colleagues, I can tell you, who are really, really, really worried about the revolution that is going on in the electoral system. And it's not favoring them. And I tell you, they are helping in sabotaging the efforts of the government in ensuring a in ensuring a free, fair, and smooth election. And so, if they are not comfortable, they are really looking forward to the moment of this election plan on this. And then I tell you this too, because if you recall, not quite long in, uh, some people, some group of people, of Muslims, had gone to court to stop Irish chairman from uh, conducting the election and uh, that survived from uh, conducting the elections because it was a need that um, they didn't uh, file in the, the past of time. They didn't have his own uh, and that therefore they did not want to try to conduct the election. So, 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 but the constitution is that it was dismissed. Should be prepared, we should be sure, we should insist 
election was cool. This is not the first one I can say as far as the election in you. So there's something too unique about it. So I I am Yes, uh, unfortunately, uh, we lost uh, Ed Lambert of Para. We are definitely going to get back to him and uh, get on with this discussion. But uh, meanwhile, uh, I'd like to get the perspective. Okay, we have Ed Lambert of Para back online. Yes, we are listening to you, Elder. Hello, Elder. Sorry, sorry, I think the line was off. Yes, please. Yeah, so me as a person, I have seen this as an original sign. I I think we should be my question now. We should that uh, they don't have their way. Okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, I'll come to Femi Oyelola before I take the politician in our midst. Femi Oyelola, with all of this that is coming from INEC, that uh, there because of the various uh, uh, problems we are having across board in security, most especially that uh, they may postpone or even cancel this election. What do you think would be the backlash that may result from? I'm attempting to either postpone or cancel this election. Well, I uh, thank to be here again and thank you for having me. Uh, all the different you may need to come to this. Uh, and I also urge Samuel Yohana to also come closer to. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay, thank you very much. Yes, please let me go on. Yes. Well, uh, the issue at hand is that uh, the air neck. Chairman, it is not a. I mean, hidden fact that actually this country is divided with insecurity all over the places. The INEC office, who are supposed to be the electoral, I mean, umpire, yeah. their properties have been the attack, especially in some regions or some part of the country, especially in the southeast, have been burned down. They are okay. and even the 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 agency who are supposed to provide security for a free and fair election are not secure. Just for recent uh, two three days ago, a police station was burned down in some part of the country, and it's all over in the region. In the southwest, yesterday in the northeast, in Zafara, some security men, about security personnel, were killed by bandits who invaded the community. The election is conducted in a midst of peace, not mm. a midst of records. Any situation that you find people blood being let in, there's no like go to be an election. Mm. But so coming out from uh, the man in charge of the electoral body, the man who's supposed to conduct the, 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 the election, it's just like a referee who uh, notice that Tongs have attacked a football field and say, okay, let all the two players, Manchester, whatever you are, uh, Cardinal United and Alpha United, come and face yourself when you see Tongs coming into the football <laughs> field with him. Even the footballer, are you going to be free to play? You, are not, you want to play another football, not the last football. So this election is being threatened. That's no fact about it because of the way things are going. It is the item we need to come to. But like, and uh, Lampard said something, he said some fifth columnists and some interest group. I, I beg to disagree on that. The interest group are even the citizens themselves. You are being allowed this uh, politician to use you as a force. Now, the backlash of this is that if you don't take care, what is going to happen? You are going to have an interim government. In this government, in this uh, country, because once you don't conduct the election by May 29, uh, the president has to go. Yeah. And he cannot, there's no power allocation. Yes. But they can yes. for people. Then there must be an interim government. Hmm. Somebody must be appointed to head the interior. Nigeria cannot be in power. Yeah. That must be something to end. So that is where we are heading to. We are heading back to the another day of the training because we don't pray to sleep. We want to sustain this democracy. So people should wake up from that. Democracy is a game of number. Democracy is a game of uh, convincing people to come into my own party. Not by democracy is not caught and one with that guy with burning mm -hmm. name of his or bandit or something. It is a game of getting people to believe in your ideology and support you and vote for you. Yes, 
there may be a political revolution. But political revolution is not is different from any military revolution. So if you think using force to gain a proper and a free and fair election, you only worsen this. We are only worsening the situation. Okay. Uh, let me come to Samuel Johanna. Yes, please. Yes, I don't know a politician with information coming out like this. The political class, what do you people feel? How how does it resonate with you as a politician that the umpire is saying that there may be a postponement or cancellation of this election? Samuel. Uh, good evening, Mr. Obama. Good evening, Mr. Good evening. Uh, it's, it's, we're not comfortable hearing this kind of thing because it affects our program of campaign and my fear is that I hope we don't have a constitutional crisis hmm. in this election of the vote. Since the time INEC offices and other security agencies offices were being burnt and being destroyed in the southeast, my mind kept telling me that some people are up to something. Hmm. We thought it was going to be only be restricted to the southeast. Whereas we can see that it's spreading to other regions. We're not at the Alami Ray, it is in the southeast. And it's not possible to conduct an election without the north, uh, without the southeast being carried along. Because it's a whole region that we're talking about here. Mm. And uh, up to this very moment, Security agents have still not identified who are the people behind this violence on INEC offices mm -hmm. and police stations. Mm -hmm. uh, for some reason, they're trying their best because there are some police stations that they've attempted to attack this criminal element or INEC offices that the security agents have foiled those uh, attempts. Yeah. But we still have these attacks going on. Less than 55 days to an election, a general election, these attacks are still going on. Like I said, we are not going Because campaigning in these areas is virtually impossible. You can only campaign in a situation whereby your safety is guaranteed. Yeah. But a situation whereby you are not sure whether you're going to be attacked or the uh, campaign venue, rally venue, is going to be attacked by hoodlums, you can't risk your life to go there. So if you ask me my opinion, we politicians are not comfortable with the level of violence okay. going on in those regions. All right. But is the Twitter agents making progress? Yes, they are. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure, by his grace, before certain time, I think uh, this thing would have been uh, sorted out. So okay. I think it's good if I make an effort to get it sorted out. Okay, let me come back to Elder Lambert Opara again. With all of this that is happening, who will be the loser? The Nigerian state, the citizens, the politicians, or what is the worst case scenario? in all of this, if paraventure, what the INEC chairman is afraid of comes to pass. Uh, all of us, all of us, including the opposition uh, party, uh, uh, have been supporting the And then from that, what used to be the past 
because they are also uh, the school of uh, awareness and what it is to be. That's what I'm talking about for school. I'm not talking about uh, comparing the different revolution. No. I am optimistic. That's what I want everybody to be optimistic. That we better have an election than to have um, an interim government. And it is true that you cannot hold the election under a very, 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 very terrible situation where you have violence in the between states, east, west, north, and south. But I am saying there are quite a lot of people who are encouraging this to deny us of a legitimate government, a legitimate transition. That's what I'm looking at. I'm not looking at any individual or anybody. We need to all for the journalists who lose, the politicians who lose, the citizens who lose, because it will set us backwards from the progress we have made since 1999. And I want to believe that we should all be conscious about this. So that like, nobody will think to take on you or her, or whether it's to take on the north or south or west or east by postponing election or by conducting election. If we conduct the election, it will be a step forward. We want to be practically speaking. And we should be seen in the eyes of the civilized world who have made progress politically. Yeah. Moving forward, not backward. So I would think that we will all collectively work together towards having a free, fair, uh, around free election. That's, that's my position. All right. Uh, uh, Femi Oyelola, rounding up on this. Yeah. Um, Nigeria should always remember that we are part of the Commonwealth of All Nations. And then uh, people are watching our democratic, how we progress. Look, just like my elder said, all eyes on us, we have made some gains from 1999 to today. If we allow inside individual influence or people who I term enemy of the nation to have their way, we all be the loser. Okay. Don't be deceived. Either you are in the party A, party B, party C, party D, you will be the loser. Because at the end of the day, all your structures you have to go back to square one. Okay. Uh, Samuel Johanna? Yes, please. Uh, I am optimistic that those issues will be resolved before the election day. Because uh, Mr. President is eager to conduct a free and fair election as his parting gift to Nigerians come May 2029 when he finally has to run. I, I don't see a situation whereby interim national government is going to be in place. We, a lot of countries are looking up to us to see that uh, we conduct a free and fair election in 2023 because we are the largest democracy in Africa and south of the Sahara. Mm. All right. Yes, let's quickly look at the second item before we open up our phone lines. The second item is um, spouses of public officers and political politicians or appointees uh, overstepping their bounds and getting into the fray and uh, attacking people like what happened in Kano recently where the wife of the DG of the DSS in Kano uh, had a little friction with uh, the governorship, uh, uh, governorship candidate in, in Kano, um, Abba Yusuf of NNPP, where it resulted to the point of her instructing the DSS officials to arrest a governorship candidates. And of course, he, uh, he was arrested and prevented from boarding that particular flight. Now, it's not just her case in isolation. Not forgetting that not too long ago, the wife of the president also got a particular young man that made some social media posts arrested by the DHS. Before now, it was the police that uh, most people would say always uh, become ready tools in the hands of uh, the who is doing the society to use. But our respected prestigious DSS seem to be becoming tools in the hands of the wives of public office holders and maybe husbands too of public office holders. Now, what does this portend for the system? Is this not part of the corruption that we are talking about? Of course, 
Some people in the past said corruption is not just stealing money, but it goes beyond that. Even using your office and the office of your, of your spouse to do and undo can also be brought under that particular cloud of corruption. Now, Elder Lapat, this particular uh, 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 one that happened, the most recent one that happened, and uh, the, the governor that was arrested, do you think that it is right? Should the governorship candidates seek for justice? Governorship candidate, governorship candidate of NNPP. Yes. I Yes. Or whatever they are at, at their base, 
Thank you so much, uh, Elder. We'll, we'll come back to the studio now. Uh, uh, Sam, you are, the, yes. you are a politician. Yes. And uh, if, uh, God willing, you get appointed into one of those offices that uh, uh, part of the purpose of the office is uh, retinue of security, aids, and all of that. Will you find yourself in a position like this? And how would you react to uh, public officers and other persons. No, I won't do that. And not, not only them, no, even their spouses. I won't do that. Uh, by my nature, I am somebody who doesn't like carrying excesses. And, uh, I, I'm, I'm humble and uh, I'm a down to earth person. For a very long time, I've been saying it. About 30% of our policemen are attached to one VIP or the other. Either working in their houses or following the VIPs around. Some even carry ambas for their wives. Whereas where their services are needed most, you don't find them there. You see, uh, some people in you know, uh, the position of the authority have powers, but they don't know how to use this power. They, 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 they overstep their boundary. On what ground would the wife of these DSS order the arrest of the governorship candidates. No matter what has happened between them, you should have gotten to that extent. Mm. Uh, the earlier, the better our leaders realize. I think uh, all this thing, they should stop. Yeah. We're already running short of policemen. We're already running short of policemen. But for some reason, I don't know the arrangement between these VIPs and the police authority. I just don't know. I just don't know. If you go to most of those positions, you find that the partner partners are not there. They are attached to one VIP or the other. Hmm. And, 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 and every time a new IG comes, he will tell us that he will withdraw policemen attached to VIPs, yes. except where it's necessary. Then you see the same thing repeating itself. After two, three weeks, that story just fizzles out. So, so I, I for one, have never, never supported policemen being attached to some VIP if it's not necessary. Mm. They should be in the police station. All right. Yes. Uh, it's only when it is necessary yeah, that uh, when it is necessary, they, they should. They should be attached and, to, 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 to the VIPs. All right. Yes. All right. Okay, uh, we we'll come to Femi Oyelola now and also get your perspective to this. Why is, why do some of these people behave like this and what should be the way they should be handled? Can't they, can't they be called to order? In other crimes, we do not see the spouses of public officers uh, getting involved in some of these things. We don't see the spouses of public officers. So, Femi, what is your take on this? Well, uh, I would describe what happened in uh, Kano between uh, Abba and uh, the wife of the DSLCD as very unfortunate. Very, very unfortunate from the both parties. Because in the first instance, uh, Abba and his entourage blocking, causing a road grids and grid blocks around that area at that particular time. And with the even siren coming, that somebody's inside the siren and his supporters thought were blocking the road. And even when the men in the back, they you know the DSS, the secret police, when they come out on their way, trying to clear the road, you don't even know the personalities inside the vehicle. You have to obey them. But you know the way our political, especially not even the, the supporters. Because the problem, if you follow the story, that's why I want us to collect some things. Because mm. we, as media practitioners, we have to put them, them in the truth. What happened was a part, a man in the entourage of the NMPP governor was filming what actually was happening. I mean, happening. The incident. You know, the, the incident. And that is one warning I have to pass around to our Nigerian youth. 
It is not every time when the road acid that instead of you to come out to help the victim, you start filming and the victim end up dying up. When you don't see any small incident, you want to film. So things are not meant to be filmed. They went and collected the phone from that guy and then the victim up. up. His name is Cody or something. Cody yes. or something. They beat him up. That is when Abba came out and went to meet the madam and said, Ah, I know you. She is a friend of my wife. Please allow them to set this man free. Then the woman said, It is within my, it's not even yeah, within my proper I am just for them. It, they are protecting me. So I don't know what actually what happened between them. And before you know, more reinforced were deployed to that venue. And she find her way to that yeah. area. So whatever they say that she did, I said they mean that transcribed between them, it is so big that that is me, which it will have come to a level in this society that we should begin to think what is at the, at the works of the security agents. We need to rejingle our security architecture. Because if you have a proper functioning security system, I don't even think the wife of the president need maybe, apart from maybe one or two people, just to escort you to wherever they are going to, because there is security there. But like we at least have somebody you know that, yes, they need to be protected too. But if else the security has deployed to protect them, who is going to protect the common man on the street? So we need a system to function. And then the politicians should also play. And remember that you are not just a governor. You are not, you are just campaigning. If you get to that office as the chief security officer of a state, you can even ban the woman from coming to your state because as the chief security officer of the state, but you are still campaigning. You should have gone down a little. And thank God that he said he, they have good relationship with the woman because the wife is a friend, I mean, she's a friend to his wife. You will have find a way to sort out this matter and want such a follower that it's not every situation that is being filmed. I think that is what provoked the uh, DSS. Okay, but, well, uh, my, my angle to it now is that what now led to the DSS arresting Abba Yusuf and preventing him from traveling I don't when, think he was not, the, when he was not one. Unless, you know, unless we get it wrong, what happened at the police, I mean, the, uh, the, airport. the airport, it's not the DSS that arrested him. It was the DPO, Canon International Airport, that came out. Maybe the DSS reported the matter to him and said, This is what happened. He now came out to take the statement of Abba, which he willingly, about, it took him almost one hour, 48 minutes to put down a statement. And the, uh, the flight was scheduled for about 30 minutes. And he said he will get the statement of the other party. That is the, uh, the other party. Should be so, the those, those other reports that the woman refused to give. A statement, so you are discarding that. No, as when, not they for like that when they get to our place, she's, 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 she's already on board. She wasn't on board. Well, that was what they said. Well, that was what they said. In the first place, they all thought you were about to have boarded the aircraft. Yes, yes. 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 because if, if, if you get out too fighting, yeah, if you keep up with right statement, she should, should stay and write her own statement. Well, it's not, it's not, it's not, not the case of double standard. The issue is this let us not forget. When you are talking about the DSS, I'm not their parent, I'm not talking about their behalf. If you know the act that established them, they are to protect what? They are not policemen. They are not army. They are to protect personalities and state infrastructures. That is their work. The DSS work is limited to protecting individuals and the property. That's okay, like let's, let's leave it at that and give opportunity to our listeners and viewers to call in now. All right, 0809 is the number to dial to be a part of the program this evening. Or you go to our various social media handles at Procyon RTV on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. You just search for Procyon RTV. Procyon is spelled P R O C Y O N. P R O C Y O N. That's the spelling of Procyon RTV. We have our first caller this evening. Hello, good evening. Welcome to Ground Zero. Hello, you're welcome to Ground Zero. What's your name and where are you calling us from? Uh, good evening, Mr. Hayes. Good evening. What's your name and where are you calling us from? Uh, yeah, I'm so honorable engineer. Honorable engineer Emmanuel, you are welcome to the program. Thank you, my brother. It's good to you. Know, you see, just talked about the, the DSS uh, wife, ordering the arrest uh, of a uh, governmental candidate. 
she did not have that right because she is she is not the uh, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the director. She is just the wife of the, the boss. So why must she go arrest uh, the Nigerian candidate because of uh, she is not trying to show that the husband is the, is the boss of the affairs. So I think they are they are they are very very nice. for me. I look at this uh, power of the documentary guest. They are not to be even like that. We want to put the husband in the position that they begin to, 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 to try to, to, to show that they are at the top. You want to come with you there, and they will not be there. That's what I think that is. Yes. I think they should not even that, that, that story. All that they demanded from the federal government for them to conduct pre credible election. He is contradicting, contradicting himself. He told us that yes, this will be the best election that we will ever have in the coming of our democracy. So we want to get attacks to their possibilities. The dance you know, uh, we are not telling us that they want to suspend our election. We are ever ready for the election and also that at the end of this attack, they also be exposed. Okay. So we will be better again. Okay. Okay. Thank you so very much, Andy Nehemiah. 0809 468 46206 is the number to dial to add your voice to the conversation or you go to our various social media handles and also uh, drop your comments and uh, as we are waiting and expecting more calls let's quickly look at who we have on our social or those that we have on our social media handles okay 0809-464-6206 on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, and YouTube. It's, uh, it's the same handle that uh, you would use. Just put in Procyon RTV, P-R-O-C-Y-O-N RTV, and you'll have the opportunity of adding your voice to the conversation this, this uh, evening. The program is Ground Zero, is coming to you on radio and networking with Invita FM Kaduna and uh, the program is reaching you right here let's take this call hello good evening welcome to ground zero hello good evening welcome to ground zero hello hello you are on already you cannot listen to the radio and the telephone at the same time Okay, good, uh, good evening, Mr. Yiz, how are you? Good evening, you are welcome to the program. Thank you very much. I I actually greet everybody in the studio. My name is Musa Bala. All right, you. Musa Bala, you are welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Let me quickly touch on the first issue, that is the issue of uh, external occupation. As uh, an officer from the studio, I've already explained it's uh, important danger in our democracy. Uh, the chairman who says that uh, no matter what, the election will still go on. And I don't know why now the new job, even though we know a larger part of the country, there's constant attack of uh, constant attack of uh, any facility like never before. Mm. And uh, I don't know why that has been done. Is it by people that want to support our democracy or those that feel that maybe they cannot make it in life? Uh, we need to be very careful. This is a very dangerous trend as far as our democracy is concerned. Uh, I hope things will change and we have the election taking place. And on the issue of abuse of privilege by one of the years of the it's also some development. Although Femi is trying to explain some of the issues that have uh, happened, I think uh, we should watch out and ensure that this thing will not continue. Thank you very much. I greet everybody in the studio. Thank you. Thank you so Thank very you. much, Musa Bala. All right, 0809-464-6206 is the number to dial, or you go to our Facebook page and also add your voice. And, um, okay, we have this call now. Hello, good evening, welcome to Ground Zero. Hello, good evening. Hello? Hello, yes, you are welcome to Ground Zero. What's your name and where are you from? Good evening. I welcome you, Good evening. Uh, Mr. Kure, you are welcome. Thank you. I was expecting uh, uh, the wife of the DSS uh, uh, chairman at least or uh, whatever he is position, he will have taken 
to take the true path now. How on earth somebody because you have a crisis with him will just say, that day I shall worry when I'm arrested all the women or all the men that are misbehaving now. Sometimes it's not everything that you will ask. And about Ireland, they hate. Yes. If you see the number of people that are in this me, I don't want to hear that election has been shifted or cancelled or rescheduled. Please, 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 we need to change this government. Let them not give me any excuse. All my mood needed, they give him. So, me, I don't want to hear any excuse. We should not do the needful. Let him give us a credible election so that we get new leaders that will take us to that promised land. I'm tired. Or oh, if I. If you can take me back to twenty fourteen, I think I will appreciate it. Have a wonderful day. Thank you very much. Thank you so very much. And uh Thank you so very much, Mr. Akure. We have another call coming in now. Let's take this call. Hello, good evening. Welcome to Ground Zero. Hello, good evening. Good evening. You are welcome to the program. What's your name and where are you calling us from? Uh, my name is Comrade Tarabiyadipite. Comrade, you are welcome. Please, let's have your take. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, about the issues of uh, postponing or cancellation of the Yes. Uh, if that should happen, I think uh, it's, I see, to me, I see it as a kind of a uh, uh, system whereby Nigeria is completely turned into screen. Uh, Nigeria has been clamoring for change right from the very first day we are under this very government. Uh, for election to take place, for election to propose, and the month of February, I think it's an it's like something like that. Uh, I, want just to, I just want to remind Nigerians that uh, in the history of election in this country, I've never seen an election that was free and fair, in election without pressure. So we are used to it. It's never an excuse. To me, it's never an excuse. Even during the time of Gula Jura time, I think in the north, the north is there. Where we have series of crises, dissociation, disaster, and death. Election still took place. There is very different between now and then. So they should just help this country and let this election come to be for us to know where we are headed to. Thank you very much. All right, thank you so much. Let's take this call. Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. Welcome to Ground Zero. Hello, good evening. Good evening, you are welcome to the program. What's your name and where are you calling us from? My name is Elder Derry Adivanto. Mm. All right, Elder, you are welcome. I think uh, this is uh, an highly irresponsible step taken by the EFS uh, wife, the Division of Moses. I think it's unheard of. And I would not want to blame her. I will blame the personnel that acted on our instructions because they acted unprofessionally. If you are a professional and you know the ethics of your work, I don't think the life of whoever will instruct you to tell the ethics of your work to arrest anybody. If she has a problem with the person in person, I think she should alert the police for it or report the matter that will be properly not invited. I think this is what we are seeing in Nigeria that is making us a market for in the community of nations. Our security agencies have been misplaced priority. It is the weather unfortunate. So in our class, where we have issues with this because we are busy, you know, arresting people. I mean, it, 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 it's an order. If you have issues, let us follow the appropriate channel to pass our issues. It's rather unfortunate. And for the island contemplating the during the election of outright cancellation, I think uh, it, it, it should be a call for. It should be a call for. All right. It should be a call for. I think that is just for my third point. Let's see how it goes. All right. Thank you so much, Ed Adari. Let's uh, come back to the studio now. While we're waiting for other calls to come in, we'll start from uh, Ed Alamba Topara. Uh, uh, Elder, were you able to hear some of the comments from our callers? 
Okay, react to some of them, please. Your line is breaking up. We can hardly hear you, Elder. Thank you. Okay. Um, and we can barely hear you. The signal is really very poor. Okay, uh, it's a little bit better. All right. Hello, Ella. It's freezing. It's freezing. It's freezing. Okay, let, let's come back to the studio because uh, we just cannot uh, hear the contributions, the, the parting contributions from Elder Lambert Opara. Let's come back to the studio now. Uh, Femio Yelola, uh, from the reactions from our callers, what will be your parting shots reacting to them and giving us some parting I, shots? The answer is from something that, especially on the high neck issue, that the election must hold. But the election must hold on condition. What condition now? There must be security. The election can hold a means of rancor, killings, and destruction. Somebody make sure the issue of uh, the Boko Haram, the Northeast uh, situation of that end. Uh, uh, we have not yet tapped another one where we have the problem. Then we have no issue of bandits, there is no issue of killings, government attacks everywhere. You can only miss a is, you can only go out of your house to vote if you are secure. You cannot even vote for your own. <laughs> Let me say, the closest person to is your wife. Now, yes. this is if you know you are going to lose your own life. So we must secure this country. And let me warn Nigeria, don't play into the hands of these fifth columnists. Come out and this killing, this destruction are done within communities. Mm. And you know these people, if we want this election to know, we have to help the securities okay. to do their job, to do their job in the, provide the right information for, for them. But if you continue to think, okay, because the election, some people feel it's going this way, and we don't go, we will end up and exp I mean helping those who want to destroy us. If you want this change, we have we all work have to work for this change. Work for this change by ensuring a peaceful atmosphere to conduct this election. Because I cannot see sending any of my words to go and be an ad hoc uh, staff or workers to, to, uh, in this election. Mm -hmm. Where I know, you know, the last of you where uh, youth couples will be involved. You know how many youth couples that will be deployed for this uh, uh, election. Now you know must spend a lot to produce this election. Mean, yeah. So my question is that this election must hold. And so the, uh, the DSS, like uh, one of our elders said, and somebody said, they need to act professionally in doing their job. They don't need to take unnecessary instruction. If they can provide their principal, protect it from any kill, I don't think there is a need for them to go back and try to make a non I mean a nonsense that we're noise out of all the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, Samuel Johanna, yes. reacting to some of the comments and the parting shots. Uh, the, the colors have spoken well, and uh, I'm sure uh, to get across the relevant security agencies. For the security agencies, are they doing their best? Yes, they are doing their best, but they can do better. Let them be more proactive in intelligence gathering, so that before these miscreants, these criminal elements, carry out their act, the security agents would have got in detail of the operational strategy and yeah. dislodge them. Okay. Because this attack is like coming too many. Yeah. Yes. And uh, for the wives of the uh, VIPs that overstep their bounds, they should please uh, minimize 
their excesses. All right. Uh, so, so uh, and uh, Lambert Opara is back, so you just round up now. All right, then uh, Lambert Opara, your, uh, your closing statement now, if possible, in one minute. I, I want to say that so that's broken up again. I guess we have to just uh, wrap it up at this point in time. I want to appreciate Samuel Yohana for having time to be on the program today. Thank you, Mr. East. And uh, Femi Oyelona, I sincerely appreciate you too. I tell you that. All right. And also to let you know that if you're interested in being part of Round Zero, all you need to do is to call us on 0809-4646206 and we'll make it happen for you. I have here with me a particular document that's uh, from uh, my scorecard from uh, Honorable Mukhtar Ahmed Monrovia, let the good presentation continue. A nice document, I'll go through it, and if there's a need for it, I'll bring him right here on Ground Zero for him to be part of the program. And also to the uh, Sadiq Maman Lagos support team, yes, we were with you guys yesterday, and of course we had all that you have in store. We're also looking forward to hosting you on Ground Zero also so that you can tell us why you are supporting the politicians or the, the leaders that you're supporting and why they must be the ones that we should vote in the coming elections. And uh, to you, the listener, I appreciate you all and everybody in the studio. Uh, Uch uh, Uche Ijeganu, thank you so much. Also, he said, Adon, and he not been Adon, he fed me. Uh, only be your efforts at all, and of course, not forgetting uh, the madam herself, Sarah. Okay. I thank you all for being part of Ground Zero today. My name is Ehis Agbon. You can call me the peacemaker. Ground Zero comes up every day of the week from 5 to 6 on Procyon Radio, but on Invicta and Procyon Radio is on Tuesdays and on Friday from 5 to 6. Until next time, we'll be on again for another package of the program. I'll tell you, plant the tree today, water it, and watch it grow. May the good mighty Lord bless and keep us all.